Aloha kako e ke au puni o mo i o Hawaii. Oh no. How you doing, Ko Mai? Man, that's what you're doing over here. Waimanalo in front of our bellows. Military base. I'm joining my other fellow nationals, like Kalehi Gill, to come here as a Hawaiian national, representing the Hawaiian Kingdom, nation, protecting all the rights, everything surrounding the Hawaiian Kingdom of our people. That's why I'm here. Uh, well, what, what uh, brought this uh, protest about, may I ask? When I know that, informed that the army wants to close off the beach areas fronting uh, this uh, Bellows Field, the beach areas are open, not only to the Kanaka Maoli, but also to the general public. Uh, and this public right away to the beach areas, especially to the Kanaka Maoli, many of our people do not realize comes from Kamehameha the first. When he made that all the public beach, all the beach areas to be open to his people because most of the food of his people at that time came from the ocean areas. The ocean areas are the supermarkets of the Hawaiian people. So this uh, public right of ways and all this sort of uh, goes back to Hawaiian Kingdom law, not American law. It goes back to Hawaiian Kingdom law. And many, many of our people uh, don't realize this, that our rights as Hawaiians, Native Hawaiians, Kanaka Maoli, Hawaiian National, is deep rooted in Hawaiian Kingdom law. Deeply, deeply rooted in Hawaiian Kingdom law. And that's why I'm here. Uh, from what I understand, uh, this base is basically on... Uh, I'm on told ceded lands and uh, in my understanding of the Hewa Joint Resolution of Annexation, the Hawaiian Islands in its entirety was heavily, Hewa supposedly transferred, ceded, stolen, everything to the United States. So everything, everything is, uh, is called, when they say ceded. Of course, the state of Hawaii, the United States, want us to think and uh, understand that when you talk ceded land, you're only talking about the 1.2 million acres of land. No, to me, ceded lands are the 4 million acres that makes up the Hawaiian Kingdom nation, the Hawaiian archipelago. And that consists of how many islands, may I ask? 36 islands. Oh, my 36 God. islands. 36, 36, 38 islands that make up the Hawaiian Kingdom nation. If you read uh, the Organic Act of 1900, it names all the islands, <coughs> all the islands. Even Parmar Island, it named Parmar Island for so that part. That part. So I, I, let us not divide our lands when they say ceded land. The whole thing, the whole thing. And that's where I'm coming from. It's, uh, and Crown Lands, uh, under the Hawaiian Kingdom, about 970,000 acres of land were crown lands. And these crown lands were kept separate from the public lands of the Hawaiian monarchy. In my research on the history of the crown lands, because most of our people, and for many reasons, did not lay claim in fee simple to the lands, that after that happened, Kamehameha III at that time set aside a large portion of his kingdom as crown lands, exclusively for the native Hawaiian people. And one of the counters on that is that the Ali'i knew that the possibility that the Hawaiian kingdom could be overthrown. And if that was to become a reality, 
then at least there would be a large portion of lands that would be administrated by the new government that was exclusively for the native Hawaiian people, the crown lands. The crown lands were not owned in fee simple by the sovereign, but the sovereign at that time, the last one was Queen Lilikulani, she administrated these lands, raising revenues to perpetuate her people into the new world, the new era, and things like that. Under the state of Hawaii, for, every, for over 50 years, the United the state of Hawaii has violated their trust responsibility in respecting Hawaiian kingdom law to these lands, the crown lands. The crown lands. It's, um, it's special, 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 special. So I'm happy to be here. I'm most honored to be here with my fellow Hawaiian nationals, especially you, my brother, and another brother that we met. That's this Pono. Mahalo. Hi. Can you also explain uh, the reason why you have the Hawaiian flag? Is uh, looks like it's upside down. Inter and I'm I'm asked that question many times, and just on a bus, couple. Days ago, I was asked by a teenager, and international law recognizes that when you fly your nation's flag upside down, that's a sign of distress. Many Hawaiians have approached me and say that I, we should have more respect for the Hawaiian flag, but if you do your research, you will find that when Queen Liliuokalani was in prison in Iolani Palace, she made a quilt, and in the center of the quilt, and the quilt is now in the hands of a Bishop Museum, and in the center of this quilt, you'll see four small Hawaiian kingdom flags sewn in the quilt in the kuē upside down position. And what is most important, if you look at that quilt, is not only in the upside down distressed position, but she has the flags cross, kapu, kapu, like kapu stick. And if you look at the look at the quilt, you'll see the kapu sticks cross, and then you'll see the upside down. Flag. So, so, so it's all it's it's all sacred to me. It's all meaningful to me, and I can never say enough more. And uh, may I ask again your name and is there any way that they can reach you if they'd like to know any more of your manaho? My birth name is Richard Kinney. My Hawaii name is Po Maikai Okulani. You can reach me if you're on the internet by hiahawaii at aol.com. My home phone number is 668-4394. If you, most likely you'll get a recording. And you just leave your name and phone number. I'd be more than happy to return your call and answer any questions that you have of the past that I and my fellow Hawaiian nationalists are, are taking. It's a glorious past. It's a heavenly past. And come join us. Mahalo. Mahalo.